This week's video is the top five Thor comics. If you want more Thor, Jane Foster, and Valkyrie for your buff, if you want as much Asgard and Midgard action as possible, you have to check out these comic stories. At number five, we have The Ballad of Beta Ray Bill written and drawn by Walt Simonson. Fun fact, Walter Simonson has written and drawn more pages of Thor than anybody else in the history of comics. He is also arguably the biggest contributor to the Thor mythos in the Marvel Comics universe. So much of what we love about the Thor movies got its roots here in Walt Simonson's run. When he started, his first volume is called The Ballad of Beta Ray Bill. Beta Ray Bill, you might have seen his cameo in Thor Ragnarok, is that kind of scary horse looking guy who dresses like Thor and wields Mjolnir. He's actually an alien who was bent on revenge against Asgard and against Thor for slaughtering his people. It's kind of a Superman last son of Krypton kind of story, but Odin deemed him worthy. He was able to wield Mjolnir and became a hero in his own right, both against and eventually partnering with Thor. If you love the vibe of science meets magic of the Asgardians actually being aliens, The Ballad of Beta Ray Bill is the perfect volume for you. Number four is Thor the Mighty Avenger by Roger Langdridge and Chris Somney, Eisner Award winner for his daredevil work. If, like myself, you are really fond of Thor's ties back to the original Norse mythology and you like the fantasy elements and you want a gentle reminder that Thor and American comic books are ultimately fairy tales at their core, you are going to love Thor the Mighty Avenger. Like the first Thor movie, this is a young bumbling Thor trying to decide what it means to be a hero and what it means to be worthy of Mjolnir. Samni's art is absolutely beautiful as Thor goes on his journey from child to adult. Also, if you are interested in the Thor and Jane relationship, that's definitely going to be explored in Love and Thunder. They have a really great working partnership. Their romance is super, super earned in The Mighty Avenger. And Jane really gets to step into her role as a hero and a person of authority before she becomes a superhero. At number three, we have The Good Butcher, written by Jason Aaron with art by Isad Ribic. If you hear comic book folks talking about the Jason Aaron Thor or the Jason Aaron Thor run, this is where it starts. Why is this important? Well, if you're psyched for Love and Thunder and you've been watching the trailer, you might have noticed Batman himself, Christian Bale, in the white, I was gonna say outfit, in the white paint as the super white character. That is Gore the God Butcher. He is one of the most vicious foes that Thor has come up against, and the adventure all begins here. This volume is a little more adult versus the Mighty Avengers, which is more all ages friendly. Thor gets a new weapon, and we launch into one of his most important stories of all time, which we know is gonna be a part of Thor, Love and Thunder. At number two, Jason Aaron returns, this time with art duties by Russell Dodderman with Thor, Goddess of Thunder. Yes, that is right, Goddess. If you're wondering, why is Jane Thor? All of the groundwork is laid in Thor, Goddess of Thunder. Jane Foster is battling internally and externally. And because this is the Marvel Cinematic Universe slash Marvel Comics Universe, how does she deal with it? She becomes a superhero. Thor has a fall from grace and Jane gets a chance to step up and really step out of the shadow of the character that she'd been from the Silver Age onward. Jane doesn't get a ton of autonomy in the comic books. And then Jason Aaron really brings it home with the most character development she has seen. Thor Goddess of Thunder is just some of the best Thor comics, some of the best comics, period, to have come out of the Marvel Now reboot. And at number one, we have the return of the creator who started this list. We have Walt Simonson's Surtur Saga. Surtur is a big demon made of fire who takes over Midgard because Thor isn't looking. Thor used to have a connection to a human called Donald Blake. We actually got a really fun cameo of that in the first Thor who allowed Thor to have one foot on Midgard and one foot in Asgard and come to Asgard basically whenever Jane needed some help. Donald Blake went away and so Surtur came in, basically started a version of Ragnarok on Earth and Thor had to fight him. It's the most epic Thor battle you can find in comics to this very day. I cannot believe that the MCU has not lifted more directly from the Surtur saga, but if you want a really condensed version of what an excellent Thor story working within the constraints of the Marvel Universe that still feels like Western comics and still feels like magic, the Surtur Saga simply can't be beat. Hi, Ashley Victoria Robinson here, a virtual realm created by Reed Pop to thank you for watching this top five video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that little bell on this channel so that you get more amazing videos like this all the time. 
and get yourself a Popverse subscription so you never miss out on any of the content that we are creating just for you. The Popverse, celebrating the best of TV, movies, and comics. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.